As you all well know, I've been trying to provide people with ways to save on their Ebony spending should they choose to invest their money into the game. It's a tough thing to do when the nature of Ebony is to pill for every last dollar in your bank account. The solution fortuitously came to me about a year ago when the United Kingdom office of Huawei App Gallery approached me saying they could offer discounts to player purchases. This method became particularly beneficial for international players who pay higher costs than players based in the United States. App Gallery's campaigns offered really large discounts for spenders and the work of the UK team to provide these discounts was very appreciated. Unfortunately, that time is no more. Since the release of Keep 40, Ebony's greed and outright ignorance of player concerns has worsened every aspect of the game. It's not too surprising to find out that the immense level of greed stretches beyond purchases in the game. The cost of packs outside the US have continued to increase beyond what could ever be considered reasonable. App Gallery made attempts to keep true to their offerings of discounts for players. However, this meant they had to take out of their own earnings to compensate for Ebony's pack inflation. Eventually, there was no course for them but to cancel Ebony promotions indefinitely as they can't keep doing a program if it means they will be losing money. In addition to the problems with Ebony's inflation of global purchases, the developers don't seem to care about fixing glitches equally across platforms. Some versions of Ebony receive updates and fixes sooner than others, which creates a very unfavorable playing experience for players on the wrong platforms that have to deal with glitches and issues with the game that the rest don't have. Although, to be frank, every single platform needs to be tested more thoroughly and these roach-infested updates need to stop. Stop. The combination of all these issues has led to the App Gallery team closing the doors on Ebony campaigns. This final campaign ends on the 5th of September, and then there will be no more until the Ebony dev team takes a minute to remove their heads out of their poop shoots. If you have VIP and loyalty reward coupons, you'll still be able to use those until they expire. I really do hope it comes back at some point, as for many people, this was the only way to save a little on purchases. Americans still have access to USA Google Play rewards. It's slightly inferior to the App Gallery campaigns, but it's still something for you Americans out there. There has been a lot of chatter recently on my YouTube and Discord channels about people looking for an alternate game to play, either to switch away from Ebony or to play on the side. Because of this, I'm currently talking with another company that runs a game basically identical to Ebony in style, except with fresher and more appealing graphics, and one other really nice change. No Ebony developers. To support a growing subscriber audience, I might devote a video or so a week to this new game as an addition to all the regular Ebony content. I'm also trying to get information on when a new server will be opening up so that those that are interested in trying out a similar style game can all join the new server at the same time as me and we can show their native population what a horde of disgruntled Ebony players can do. Because these games are also so very similar in design, a lot of your current knowledge will be transferable. If you're thinking about trying something new, keep this in mind. I'll make a video or two in the coming weeks to introduce the game. Check those out and consider joining the Miser Swarm as we invade whatever this new server is going to be. I called it guys and gals. I mean, it wasn't a hard call. Greed plus greed equals more greed. The newest civilization set is confirmed. Yes, there's no official mail yet. However, if you go to the Civilization Equipment tab in your Wonder and you scroll all the way to the right, you'll see a locked icon that suggests a new Civilization set. It shouldn't come as a surprise. Civ gear will never end until Ebony creates a new money horse they can milk until it's dead. Ew. Milking a horse? Why didn't I go with a cow instead? This new set is going to be called the Augustus set, and it's designed primarily for debuffing. This means that 90% of people obtaining this gear will end up stuffing it on some lucky subordinate city mayor. 
The individual pieces provide impressive debuffs. Let's take a peek at the base form for the Augustus set, keeping in mind that these are the unrefined and zero star versions. When enhanced to five stars, the percentages will increase as well. The Augustus Scepter debuffs enemy ranged attack, enemy ground defense, and enemy mounted HP. The Augustus Bracers debuff enemy mounted defense and enemy ground HP. The Augustus Crown debuffs enemy ground HP, enemy ground and mounted defense, and enemy ground attack. The Augustus Armor debuffs enemy mounted attack and HP, and enemy ranged attack. The Augustus Leg Armor debuffs enemy ranged and siege attack, enemy ranged defense, and enemy ranged and siege HP. Finally, the Augustus Boots debuffs enemy ranged and siege attack and enemy ground defense. You may have noticed that I skipped a lot of the basic attributes of each piece such as troop attack, march size increases, and so on. The reason for skipping those are that they would not be active on subordinate city mares. Well, technically something like plus 20% ground attack would be active, but not in the way that many people would hope. The buff applies to the troops that general is in command of. If this gear is on a sub-city mayor, then only the troops produced by that sub-city would receive the additional buffs. So technically, a few hundred troops might receive a marginal buff. Maybe they'll help you kill an extra tier 1 troop or 2. So what about the set bonuses then? The Augustus set provides a 10% debuff to enemy attack with two pieces equipped, a 20% increase to march size capacity with four pieces, and 12% all troop attack with six pieces. If these pieces were placed on the same subordinate city mayor, you would get the minus 10% enemy troop attack, which is equivalent to the six piece Achaemenide set bonus, but the other two bonuses would likely do nothing. They would light up green, of course, but they'd have no actual impact in battle. One thing that players with a full set might choose to do is split the set into three groups of two pieces. Putting two pieces of the set on three unique subsidy generals allows you to get three instances of the minus 10% bonus for two pieces equipped. However, this would also take away the six piece Achaemenide bonus, which means it's basically a trade off. The case where this gets really powerful is if your account is in the in between stages of gearing up your subsidies. If you have a few subsidy mares without six out of six Achaemenide, you'll get a lot of benefit by spreading out your two pieces of Augustus. The last consideration is whether it might eventually become the norm for alliances to have dedicated debuffers on rallies against players. Having multiple people stack the two-piece set bonus with carefully chosen Augustus pieces might wreak havoc on the enemy. These debuffs are pretty significant, so the impact of having a few players debuffing the enemy with this set might actually be more effective overall than just having everyone go full buff mode. I guess we'll see where people go with this. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting the channel. If you liked what you saw, please consider hitting the like button and checking out other videos on the Miser's Guide to Ebony. I'll see you in the next video.